Welcome to our political party, a conversation with a kind of smart, opinionated guest you'd want to sit next to at any good party. Let's meet our guests. Robert Zimmerman, a Democratic strategist, communications expert, member of the Democratic National Committee. He will be partisan, I hope. And Roy Seekoff, <laughs> who's a writer, producer, founding editor of the must-read Huffington Post. Thank you, sir. And on my side of the table, Michael Meslansky, who is a language messaging expert and author of The Language of Trust, Selling Ideas in a World of Skeptics. And Kellyanne Conway, who is a Republican pollster and president of Woman Trend, a research firm tracking trends that influence women's lives. Welcome, everyone. All right, take a listen at this clip from last night with the president on The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't say you'd run this time as a pragmatist. You would not. It wouldn't be, yes, we can, given certain conditions. No, no, no I, 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 think, I, I think what I would say is, yeah. yes, we can, but it <laughs> is not. <laughs> I love that. Yes, we can, yeah. but. We haven't yet. Okay, we're going to fill in the blank. Yes, we can, but. We haven't yet. <laughs> I think the president is, a, we just saw the opening shot of his 2012 re-election campaign, Kathleen, where he's basically saying, yes, we can, but not in four years. We really need eight. Uh, and that's not what he promised. You know, he was very strict about timelines. He was going to get us out of Iraq in 16 months. He frankly won the Democratic primary by being the only one to stand up against his now Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, his now Vice President Joe Biden, saying, I've been against the Iraq war. Yeah, but he's their boss, now. so it's okay. He was gonna, it's okay. Yeah. He's that uh, for now. And he, is, uh, he said the stimulus plan would create jobs, would reduce unemployment to a certain level by a certain time. We know that that hasn't happened. So he's a man who has set his own deadlines. Well, yes, we can, but, you know, Washington's a different story once you get there, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think, Kelly, to be fair, you know, we have a story on the Huffington Post today where we actually list 10 times during the campaign where he said exactly, yes, we can, but it's not going to be easy. And he says, don't let naive idealism turn into bitter defeatism. But vote for and that's it, what's happening. For president. Well, no, he said it's going to be a long, hard slog. Washington's not going to be an easy place to change. I mean, the poster just didn't fit. Yes, we can, but only if Mitch McConnell lets me. So right. I think that well, was the problem. Uh, the uh, idea that we have to rely upon Mitch, Mitch McConnell to let the administration succeed is a failure in leadership by its premise. And to the administration's credit, they're not just relying upon the Republicans to let it happen. I think what we have to realize is that the people underestimate the intelligence and the sophistication of the American electorate. Yes. And I think people understand the, pri the crisis that was inherited is not going to be resolved in two, in two years or even the first term. But there's no denying there's progress being but, made. But if that's the case, then, then isn't the president underestimating our intelligence too? I mean, he says that we're hardwired uh, not to think clearly when we're scared because we don't agree with what his policies are. Look, can I say something? He is frustrated, he, he, he agonizes over this, but he has done an amazing amount. And I have been as critical of their economic policies as anybody out there. But you know what? When he came into office, we were bleeding. The patient was on the floor about to die, and he has turned this around. We were losing 700,000 jobs a month. Now we're in positive territory creating jobs. It's not perfect. It's not where it should be, but the policies worked. I think the defeatism of the negative party is what we've got to get rid of. Tell the affirmative story. He's winning. And I just wish we'd say that. Well, there is no but. Is not... There is a radio ad by the Faith and Freedom Coalition political organization He's run naughty. by Ralph Reed. I want us to take a listen to this ad. It's us versus them. Big government versus a big belief in faith and freedom. Sharon Engel versus Harry Reid. All right, now there's a nice inclusive ad. All right, so around the table, you one of them or you one of us? And who who is them? them I, don't, I don't quite get this uh, distinction, but tell me who's I who. I think them is the dead people. What was that music? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm an, yeah, you did actually, you're right, it's a mortuary I'm sound. A, the choices between those two, I'm neither of the above, you yeah, know? Exactly. All right. But I will say, I, I give the truth and advertising award to that ad. I mean, we don't need any subtle racism, right? right. We go right for it. This is this is what they mean. Right. I mean and the us versus them here, as I see it, just on the larger narrative, not particularly this this ad or this race is that people want to they want to elect outsiders all of a sudden elective experience is not a great asset it's a liability and look at people like Harry Reid 38 years uh, Patty Mary and Russ Feingold two people in Washington Wisconsin who ran Michael, this who were the constant you know outsiders well, now the insiders well first I would say that since high school nobody's really want to be part of them it's always about wanting to be part of us so as a, as a piece of positioning and framing it's it's fantastic but 
I don't think that this is about insider versus outsider. This is about trying to talk about we're the, we're the people that, that support God and freedom, and if you're not with us, then you're against us. I mean, it, it is kind of very crass. Mm -hmm. I think if the campaign is about riling up the base, it's extremely effective. If they're trying to pull swing voters in with this kind of ad, it, it, it would hurt them in the But Harry Reid is a religious man. He's a Mormon who uh, has sometimes voted pro-life. Even the NRA didn't get involved in that race because they're both pro-Second Amendment. I don't think that he's the typical... But that's not what they're saying. Yeah, they're basically saying you don't believe in the same God. government versus God. And that yeah. was the way the ad was framed. Yeah. And the that's the ad ad is, is, a, is a dog whistle that's, that's got long standing in the political arena. And it's always, it's always about us being, we're the real Americans, them, you know who they well, are. Well, that's the exact quote that Sarah Palin used in 2008. Right. Real right. Americans. Yeah. That's what they're saying. I'm right. always them. I think this is. You know, them. it's not so bad, to yeah, I'm sort of them. I never was one Being of those. Being them's okay. Right. I think as others have observed, this is when Sharon met Harry, and Harry's out of touch. White House Press Secretary Robert Gibbs said he's going to take his first question by Twitter. So, in 140 characters or less, what would you ask the president? I'm a Democrat. I don't do, I, I don't do anything under 140 characters. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you, I, I, would, I would ask the president if you're opposed, don't ask, don't tell. Why are you still having the Department of Justice enforce it? Just issue an executive order and end it. I'm All with right, you. You're Congratulations. Your you're, but he's right. He is right. He's right. He's right. I'm glad you said it. I think I'm going to go the Demi Moore route and just take a, a picture of the foreclosure crisis in a bikini and send that to him. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I don't know go what that visual. looks like. Yeah, but, it's okay. interesting. Yeah. I guess I'm Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> <laughs> I say, dude, what happened to Hope and Change? I had dude in mind, too. <laughs> Where's my job, dude? Uh, yours truly, a one-time Obama voter. Ooh. Uh, you voted Ooh, for Obama? No, I didn't. I'm, I'm oh, not. Well, I'm uh, glad you had a follow-up there. Uh, well, but since you raised the dude stuff, is it right to call the president that? On The Daily Show? <laughs> when Anywhere. you're trying to appeal to young people? Young um, I personally think no. I actually, I worry about the lack of dignity that is accorded to certain offices in our country now. I really do. I mean, even to the state senator. much bigger issue. The way we're communicating and the forms we communicate with are really, in fact, revolutionizing how we look at public officials, the accessibility of public officials. And I think sometimes it harms a public official's credibility to be doing every media opportunity that comes along. It may be good for Ryan Seacrest, may not be good but, for the president. But I think it, uh, like somebody like Sarah Palin is using the new media. She's, you know, when, she's just going right around the, the New York Times. She's going right to her, her base. She's tweeting. She's posting it on Facebook. And she's revolutionizing, I think, a way that you can uh, go so right you to your base. So do you think she well, should be called governor or caribou Barbie? I think should be, she should be called uh, half governor since, half she, governor? Uh, since she walked away from yeah, her. But worse than going around the New York yeah. Times, she's going around HuffPo. And that shouldn't be permitted. <laughs> well, we're not going to let her get around. We're putting the fence higher <laughs> and wider. No one gets around. Keep her, keep her in, yeah. Well, we have our thoughts on this on PS. And I hate to be so familiar, but Robert, Roy, Michael, and Kellyanne, thank you so much for joining us.